Hello. I'm going to jump straight into this with a job advert that I saw on Twitter a couple of years ago. Work in an office with a slide, 12.5k per annum. This is a full-time job, and admittedly, it's in one of those places that is not London. And some of those places are very cheap to live in, but not that cheap. And I basically rage-followed this organization on Twitter. They have kind of improved what they do in the past few years, but at the time, they're mainly bragging about their office and retweeting people asking, would you like a web presence for just 99 pounds? This is their office slide. <laughs> I mean, the, the actual slide part compared to most, I feel, is commendably business-like, which are <laughs> two words I thought I'd never combine. But it does have this, this kind of meeting Wendy house at the top. Imagine getting fired in that. Or imagine being the boss and failing to secure funding for next year and having to decide whether you fire people in the Wendy house or ask them to meet you in the cost around the corner. Oh, I don't know. No reason. That's not all. This is their combined meeting table and ball pit. If, if they'd at least kind of used black ball pit balls as some kind of corporeal manifestation of bullet points, I'd respect them. <laughs> That's kind of a high concept ball pit, but they didn't, so I don't. And instead, I like to imagine that table slowly, slowly descending <laughs> and sealing him inside until he's dead. <laughs> but the thing is, from this distance, and with a couple of years' hindsight, I don't know who's at that organization anymore. They, they seem to have improved the work they do massively. And I don't know if those people just so happen to derive pure unbridled joy from having those office accoutrements around, or if there's some kind of big lever for the boss to crank down the salaries. Cranking them down, come on, your job's fun, it's creative, you love it, I'm going to pay you less. And there's just no way for me to tell when I'm staring in at this from the outside. But I hate this shit. I absolutely hate it in my bones. And it really annoyed me that I couldn't articulate why to anyone, despite the fact that they agreed with me and also couldn't articulate why. So I moved on and started looking at startups and other tech companies. A lot of them have fun offices. So let's look at some examples. Here's catch of the day's office slide. Sorry. Probably in the way. Here's iBoss's office slide. <laughs> His health diagnostic lab's office slide. <laughs> His Highlands office slide. His Highlands other office slide. <laughs> Here are Aweber's office slides. Here's iSelect's office slide. Here's Mind Candy's office slide. Here's Rev Contents office slide. Here's Box.net's <laughs> office slide. Here's Snagger Jobs office slide. <laughs> and Social Chain's office slide. <laughs> And Ticketmaster's office slide. Now, a few of you might have realized what I'm doing here, which is that by presenting these tableaus of employment-based joy in all their bright colors in the form of a list, and then reading out the company names and appending the words office slide with almost no modulation in my voice whatsoever, I'm creating an indelible emotional association between office slides and negative emotions like boredom and contempt. And that's a really convenient way for me to just sort of brainwash you into thinking the way I do, rather than <laughs> constructing an actual argument. So thank you, Jake, for handing me this microphone. And with that in mind, moving on to the ball pits. <laughs> it's Cool Blue's office ball pit. And Idea's office ball pit. And this is my favorite ball pit. Here's Zappos, office ball pit. <laughs> just see a manager stood next to that asking, what do you mean time off for mental health? <laughs> it, 
it looks like they hardly care about their employees at all. That ball pit, it's subtract the stuffed camel and add a liter of piss, and it is then basically the dash con ball pit, which if you've never heard of it, you should definitely look it up after this event, the dash con ball pit. It's an amazing story. So I mentioned this to a friend last year, and while he didn't, it turned out he's done a consulting gig for one of the startups I've just shown you. And while he didn't quite defend the platonic ideal of an office slide, he did defend one particular instance of them. And he said to me, sure, they're a startup, they're very startup-y, and they got an absolute shit ton of funding. And when they, when they got that, they said to everyone at the company, you get to choose one extravagant thing for us to have in the office. And everyone did, and they did all of it. So one of their people in their, their little heart of hearts just so happened to really want an office slide. And someone else there in their heart of hearts just dearly wanted an office ball pit. And Business Santa gave it to them. And he said that they used them and possibly used them a bit too much, but their joy in having those things is genuine and true. And the thing is, that might be the truth about that. Or, possibly, my friend's perception has been colored by a lucrative consulting gig. <laughs> and possibly, all of the people in that office chose those things because they're just doing the weird tech rituals and the weird tech status symbols, and their 90-hour-a-week job seems to be sucking the marrow from their bones. But it is okay, it is okay, really, we, we're in a fun office. Look at all the extrinsic fun, it is fun. No, shut up. <laughs> and from the outside, I just can't tell what the truth is. I can't tell, so I moved on in my search and started looking at global corporations. <laughs> Not all global corporations have an office slide, but some of them do. Let's look at a few examples. <laughs> this is Google Mountain View's office slide. And this is Google San Francisco's office slide. And at Google Tel Aviv, they have an erotic office slide. <laughs> which would be my favorite were it not for plucky little Google Detroit. I sometimes wonder if Google Detroit have small slide syndrome when they go to company events. I like that they've made the stairs look more fun than the slide. Like, <laughs> it would definitely be more fun to slide down that banister than the actual slide. And the difference between global corporations with office slides, and I don't just mean Google, like Red Bull and um, various media companies and Lego have office slides at their corporate HQs as well. Uh, the difference between those corporations and startups and small companies doing this is that they hire really expensive design and architecture consultancies to research and plan their offices. And in the course of all that research, something has spat out the conclusion, you should have an office slide. <laughs> so I tried to find the research and I can't because it hasn't been published. It only seems to have been alluded to in listicles about 20 coolest offices. You should definitely work in this summer. So it's possible that someone has found an empirical connection between office slides and worker well-being or boosted creativity or more productivity, all the guff they tend to claim in articles about cool offices. Or it's possible that an office slide is a much more palatable way of padding an enormous quote than $20,000 toilet seats. <laughs> and again, I'm looking in at this from the outside and I can't tell what the truth is. And what's annoyed me so much in two years of thinking about it is that the one thing I know for sure is that slides and ball pits are fun. I fucking love them, just not when they're in offices. <laughs> to be more rigorous about it, in the work of French sociologist Roger Cawa, he defined a four-part typology of play and games. And slides and ball pits firmly fit into the category Illinks. Before I explain what that is, I'd just like to point out that in his office, Roger Cawa did not have a slide. <laughs> he had a rock collection, because <laughs> he knew what was up. Illinks is play centered on sen uh, your senses being overwhelmed, on disorientation, on vertigo. It's kind of caroming through the world, repeatedly losing control of and regaining control of your physical self. As adults, we tend to find sensible and structured ways of doing it, like mountain biking and lindy hop. 
as kids, we'll just spin around on the spot and fall over. But it's all the same stuff. It's related. And when you enter into that kind of play, this incredible vista opens up before you of things you can do that are incredibly stimulating. And it's full of bright colors and possibilities. And you could do any of them, any of them at all, anything. Or, or you could have a meeting in the ball pit. <laughs> And here, when I saw this image, I knew I had something that was at the crux of my discomfort. And it was only this summer, discussing with Beck, that the term symbolic leisure popped into my head. And suddenly, that made sense of it. And it covered all the edge cases and all the possibilities, both positive and negative. And the idea is that anything we enjoy can become functionally autonomous from the joy it used to give us. It can become a mere symbol or signifier for that joy or that play. To take an example from my own life, Spelunky is a game I massively love. I've played it many thousands of times. The only thing I haven't done in Spelunky is an aubergine run, and I'm still getting better at it. I still massively enjoy it. But sometimes I find I've been hammering at it for two hours, and then eventually I die and throw the controller or the Vita down or whatever and shout, this game isn't making me happy. And at that point, I realize I've spent two hours playing Spelunky because some horrible, hairy job I've been trying to ignore has crawled to the top of my to-do list, and I'm trying to ignore it. And those two hours of play are not me using Spelunky because I enjoy it. They are symbolic leisure. And the reason I worry about this so much is because I run events about games and play. Most speakers introduce themselves and do the self-promotion at the, the start because I'm a more experienced public speaker. I've <laughs> snuck it in near the end. So I run a thing, mainly I run Feral Vector. That's the thing I do each year that I'm proudest of. It used to be in London. I've been doing it five years, and now it happens up in Hebden Bridge. We've done so many things. We did a game jam where people had to make games out of real jam. We did a post-apocalyptic business-themed LARP in the woods called yeah. Business Year 2000. <laughs> we did Curiosity Live with an actual cube of concrete and a locket with Peter Molyneux's face in the center. <laughs> I expected it to take hours. It took people seven minutes <laughs> to get through it. We did a game jam in the woods where people had to make things only with stuff they found out there. We had people make things out of cardboard. And we generally just sent them outside to do stuff they wouldn't normally do. And there's a thing I'm afraid of every time I run this, but I was especially afraid of it the first time we changed it from being a conference to being an event where people could do all kinds of weird stuff. And that was that it would just become Nathan Barley, the <laughs> conference. It was a real risk, and I was really scared. I thought this might actually happen the first time I did it, and if that happens, it's just a one-off, and fuck it, I'll destroy my whole life. So we fight that when we do the programming. We try to make sure that everything is in some way purposeful or meaningful. And that might be getting designers to look at things from a new point of view or experiment with a medium they haven't before. It might just be taking the piss out of the video games industry because that feels like a vital and important thing to do more than ever nowadays. Sometimes it's just making video game developers fuck off away from screens for five fucking minutes. <laughs> And I worry about it because work is the highest risk environment for symbolic leisure. When the things you have to do and the things you want to do overlap, that zone in the middle isn't necessarily improved. It can just become a kind of fuzzy soup of burnout and confusion. And that is why I hate office slides and ball pits. If you think I'm wrong about that, then we can go to the park around the corner, into the little kids' play area, and beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> in a fun way. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Here's my social media husk.